<laughs> oh man, we are we are excited for for this one this week, you guys. This is a a man who's become. Uh, he's not just a legend amongst Titans fans, but he's a legend on this podcast for sure. A guy you've heard us talk about many times before and a guy that we are stoked to finally get a chance to talk to a man who racked up over 8,300 yards of punts at the Ohio state university, a Ray guy semifinalist in 2008 and the man known for two of the most iconic plays in Titans history that didn't end up counting for anything. <laughs> he is Anthony Joseph Trapasso. AJ, dude, what is up, man? Hey, guys, I, I appreciate it. It's actually Albert Trapasso. Uh, Albert. Big deal. Yeah, yeah. Named you know after what? My grandfather. I, I that's think, just, I uh, think I, that's, we got to get that's the, the research team. The research. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to yeah, hey, we're gonna have really, to fire him uh, yeah, after, I, I really, after this interview. <laughs> Truly, I, I am a very appreciative you guys have me on and any opportunity to, you know, just kind of relive the the old days and, and uh, talk Titans, man. I'm all for it. So certainly appreciate the uh, chance to jump on with you guys. Uh, Jack, I'm going to go to you here. Uh, where do you think we should start? Because we could yeah. start with the the first man to ever accomplish something in NFL history uh, down in Dallas or we could go up to Canton, Ohio, uh, with arguably the most iconic play in Titans history that never it, it didn't really end up meaning anything because yeah. of it being an exhibition game. I think we we, we play the hits early because preseason, the, the, the Hall of Fame game just happened last week. Titans, it's game week okay. for the Titans. Games are yeah. getting going. And and, you know, and we, this is on the day we are recording this. It is August 8th, which is widely considered to be Jeff Fisher Day. So, okay. the, the, you know, eight, the eight. man who kind of I don't dare we say uh, emptied the, the bullets in his chamber, probably a little too soon. I think we all agree with how well the play worked. Um, <laughs> but AJ, t take us through the 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 punt. The fake punt heard around the world, uh, or at least amongst the Hall of Fame, that ended up going for a touchdown. You, from the moment the play is called in, what is going through your mind? Well, let's let's back up just a little bit. Um, you know, playing in the Hall of Fame game, blessing and a curse. We've got the team together. Camp roster has been established for, what, 10 days at most. Um, and... You know, Coach Fisher, is, he's, he's all about mixing it up. He wants to throw a wrinkle early in just to give defenses and, and special teams something to think about. And they knew that um, at Ohio State, I'd run a couple fake punts, but I was a running back in high school and um, certainly glad I didn't pursue that in the Big Ten. My, I don't think I'd have survived. But uh, <laughs> um, he called it Buckeye because Donnie Nicky was the up back calling, calling for the snap. Yeah. And griff's coming around behind us and so we simulated this in practice mostly walkthroughs two or three times it never timed up it, it never timed up am i afraid to run it absolutely not i'm geeked up because I, I, it's just it, it lets me be an athlete a little bit instead of just a, a special teams guy and so it didn't time up but one time in practice it, it kind of went okay but it, it just I was like this really isn't that deceptive <laughs> like of course we're gonna hand it off to Griff like why wouldn't you the guy's an incredible athlete so we're back in Ohio grew up in Ohio played at Ohio State I got a lot of friends in the stands who are excited to come and watch and we'll get to Craig Hendrick in a minute and, and you know I knew I was gonna play because there's no way Craig was playing in that game <laughs> and uh so you know what are we six minutes into the game and Fisher, as I'm running out, he goes, Buckeye, Buckeye. I'm like, are you serious? Like my first NFL play, <laughs> you know, in my home state, mm -hmm. in the stadium that I, I love, right. The, the hall of fame stadium is, is just amazing up there. And as soon as Griff pulls away off the line, it kind of comes back behind me. There are three guys completely on Mark. I'm like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to be on IR. I'm going to get 65%. I'm already starting to cash the check and I'm like, cause I'm going to die. I'm getting ready to die. Is that what they and give you? 65% of the game check I, you get for being I, on I, IR? That, well, the, the thing is you get hurt in camp, they can't cut you. So then you're, you know, you're oh, IR. Man. So yeah. So I was like, all right, sweet guaranteed money. You know, we're in, you know, I'll get a credited season out of this. Cause my left <laughs> leg's going to be gone. 
Uh, and those guys just bit on the fake so hard. I mean, it was wide open and it, it ended up going for a touchdown. And at the end of the play there, I think we slowed it down after we watched this, there was like two or three holdings that didn't get called. Donnie Nicky <laughs> literally murdered somebody right behind me in the back. Like it was a total block <laughs> in the back, uh, but they let it play. Hey, why not? You know, give me a minute to shine. And uh, Baronis rest his soul. He came up to me after the play and he goes, Hey, great happy for you make sure you get this ball down on the extra point or i'll kick your ass so <laughs> like i was like yes sir all right great yeah uh, you just score a touchdown on like one of like it was that that wasn't your first play uh first of, play Very it was your first, first play. play uh your first, first play NFL, NFL play ever yeah yeah and it goes for a touchdown and yeah. the very next play baronis is like Hey, you still have a job to do, rookie. right? Yeah, yeah, but that just goes to show he he was pumped for me, no doubt about it. I mean, we talked a lot about it, and um, but he was like, "Hey, you screw up my job, we're gonna have a problem." So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the ball. Down. I don't even remember holding the ball for that snap, but hell, I barely remember the play because that right there, boys, is the definition of running scared, and yeah. it's just it's like we're out in the open. I'm like, all right, I'm getting ready to get teed off somewhere, heads on a swivel. You know, and it's just, it worked out. It was great. Well, it's a play we haven't forgotten about. And, it, you know, no. it happened, I, I believe, 14 years ago this season. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it's an incredible play. The play call was awesome. A lot of Titans fans, like Austin said, wish Fisher may have pocketed that one for the regular season. But I don't know that Hintrick has the wheels to take off like no, that. No, no. Yeah. No, he blew his calf out that year in week two and called it quits and Mm -hmm. um kind of getting to that I, I really knew where I stood with the team Jeff Fisher was was awesome treated me great um he kind of reminded me a lot of, of Jim Tressel but a Jim Tressel that curses which was uh <laughs> a lot, <laughs> was more fun you gotta uh, pay for but, his, you, gotta, you gotta pay for your own tattoos in Nashville too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well you know I might have a few but you know that's neither here nor there um but he he told me he said listen AJ, we're, we're really excited about you, but we're just going to be transparent here. If Craig's walking, he's playing. And at the time, I didn't digest it the way I, I wish I would have. I, I was angry about that. I was like, man, I'm, I'm better than him and whatever. And, but I, and since then, and, and having some time to like appreciate the opportunity, I would have wanted that kind of appreciation for my uh, career at a place had been there for so long. You know, he's, he was 39. I think he was going to turn 30 or 40 during that season had completely changed his diet up. I didn't know him beforehand, obviously, but um, that kind of respect that he gave his, his veteran players was, was just tremendous. And, and it was rightfully so. I mean, I, I <laughs> Craig played for Lou Holtz at Notre Dame. Yeah, I mean, that's how <laughs> yeah, old right, he was. Right, right, right. And, and, uh, it was uh, he hadn't made it through a full season and I think four or five years leading up to the 09 season. Um, but, you know, in, in retrospect, I got a ton of respect for those guys and, and just uh, I mean, you got to hand it to Craig for that kind of longevity. It was just incredible. In the same Hall of Fame game that you pulled off a 40 yard touchdown on probably the best fake punt that's ever been ran in the NFL's history. Yeah, I you agree. also get to hold the ball for the final play of the game. You were tasked with oh, taking, yeah. you were tasked with taking yeah. a safety at the very end of the game to secure the W over, over the Bills. What was Fisher out there trying to get you killed? I mean, we, we already had Hintrick yeah. on one leg, but here yeah. he is sending you uh, throwing you to the wolves, not only on a fake punt, but running for your life to get an intentional <laughs> safety so you win the I, game as the time expires. I think he was he was smart enough to know that I was naive enough to go ahead and take on those challenges. I mean when you're 22, 23, 24, however old I was at the time, you, you, you don't think you're going to get hurt. You, you know, like, and then looking back on it, I'm like, there were absolute monsters on that field. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it could have been a different story. Dustin Fox, who I played with at Ohio state, he was actually on the bills roster that year. And a, uh, an unknown guy named Ryan Manilak, who I actually played high school football with, he was on the bills at the time. So man, what a cool experience. Um, uh, it was sorry, my phone's going crazy, but uh, um, it, it was such a, a cool experience in Ohio and, and something we'll never forget, especially as a family. Everybody got to be there and enjoy it. It was it was pretty cool. 
Amazing. Is eight points in a game for a punter a record? I mean, obviously two of them went to the other team, but like right. I still feel like that is I has there ever been a better punting performance in an exhibition or a real game ever? I because without I, I punting can't the ball once either. Y- yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you can take away the like, you know, the nitty gritty of what punters do, yeah, it was a hell of a game, you know. It's right. It's I feel uh... like they should have taken your cleats and put them just literally walk them right across the street to the Hall of Fame and put them in there. <laughs> yeah, they there was uh they would have been labeled like most scared run ever. <laughs> <laughs> Well, later in the, zero confidence <laughs> later in the preseason you actually are probably the only I, i'll have to go look look back on this but i can't imagine anyone anyone else has done it but you're the only tennessee titan to force a rule change in the nfl well um, and i think i think the first person to ever do it because this was the first year that jerry world was open exactly. i believe right yeah yeah it was uh it was a wild thing that was going on and and i found out a lot of the particulars after the fact uh about some of the background behind this but it was the first football game played in that stadium there was a soccer an international soccer game i think they played in there before that which you know they're, they're not going to get up in the 85 90 foot range on a mm-hmm. soccer ball typically speaking but um as soon as we walked in me and craig looked up and i was like that is in play buddy because it a lot of people don't know this when they first built it Mitsubishi built the TV and they used a kid named Matt McBriar to set the height of the bottom edge of that of that screen Matt McBriar I believe is Australian line drive punter uh, not really known for his hang time uh, but he can kick the ball 60 70 yards which is great I'm on the other side of that. I don't want to have to tackle anybody. I'll take 50 yards with five second hang and just walk off the field with a fair catch. Totally cool with that. And that's definitely trestle influence there. But when we walked in, they had these five foot Mitsubishi tin signs hanging off the side of the TV. So now it's at 80 feet, give or take. Um, And during warmups, you know, um, what's his uh who owned uh, jerry jones was down on the field with all the mitsubishi people all you know just gawking Gawking over this tv yeah Yeah, just like this is and it was incredible let's be honest that thing is insane but jeff was like coach fisher was like let's see how many times we can hit this in warm-ups you know like i knew it i knew it was his idea yeah he's like he's like he goes he goes if you hit it i don't care he's like we're just out here warming up so I'm in shorts and a t-shirt pepper in this thing. And Matt McBriar's on the other side and he's just, you know, throwing laser beams, not, not really getting that close. Well, I'm hitting it on the way up and I'm like, this is actually like a pretty big nuisance because it was like from the 25 yard line to the 25 yard line, uh, not super wide. I don't know how wide it is at the bottom, maybe 12, 15 feet, but definitely in play. So. I hit it a couple of times and I looked over at Jerry and he's just like, damn it. Like, what, what have we done here? And so <laughs> is he, is he getting mad at all? I, I visibly upset. Like he's, he's okay. like, where did but, we but like screw not, up? Not direct, not directed at you just at the fact that it, it's so low or was yeah. he getting mad at you? Uh, well, I, I can't speak for his anger level before the game, but I know after the game, he blamed me. <laughs> so <laughs> I, know. Uh, I read some went of those on, quotes after yeah, the game. He, he was on like uh, Letterman, I think. And they were like, what'd you think about what happened at your facility? And he goes, well, I know one punter that'll never play for the Cowboys. And I was like, eh, <laughs> screw you, Jerry. Like, I don't care. <laughs> uh, so, so we're in the middle of the game and Jeff's on the rules committee. And they didn't really have, from what I understood, a a real solid game plan if it was to be hit. And so I think it was second quarter. uh, I'm running running out there to punt. And um, he's like, he's like, yeah, hit it. Let's see what happens. Oh, my God. So I I hit more of a pooch style punt just to make sure I hit it. And uh, it hit it on the way up and, and uh, they called the play and, you know, I, I'm pointing up at the board, like, Hey, it hit the board, it hit the board. And so they replayed the down and, and the game goes on. Well, the best part about this story is towards the end of the game, 
we took a safety on purpose and uh or we either took it on purpose i think i thought we took it on purpose or or something happened it wasn't like a big deal we were getting our asses kicked and and so they called a tv timeout i'm standing next to fisher and he's just like hey um out of curiosity how many times do you think you could hit it in a row i was like what do you mean he goes well it's punt after kickoff you're just sitting there holding it nobody's rushing you he goes how many times do you think you could hit it i go probably four or five times like if I was trying, he goes, yeah, let's do that shit. Let's just, let's, let's, he's like, let's delay the hell out of this game. And uh, I was like, man, I don't know how this is going to look, but I'm in like, whatever, what do I have to lose? So I'm running out on the field and uh, he, he whistled at me. He literally looked at his watch, looked at the scoreboard and he was like, ah, screw it. Don't hit it. Right. And he said something along those lines. So now I'm like, I got a free pass here. If I hit it, he's not going to be that mad about it, but should I hit it? You know? And so I, I battled with this. I hit an absolute piss missile of a punt that I had friends that were sitting in club and they said, according to them, it went 20, 20, 30 feet into like the level of the screen, just right of it. And so I was like, man, I was kind of hoping to hit it, but it was a good punt anyways. <laughs> so after that, it, it just all hell broke loose. And, you know, he went on and on Letterman was talking shit about me. Sorry, if, shouldn't cuss. Sorry about that. No, but, no, uh, no you're cuss good. away. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Poop part balls. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's made that comment. But I, I heard through the grapevine, whether this is true or not, I'm not 100% sure. But the way that the screen was designed, they have to helicopter up two winches <laughs> on two separate parts of that. They clearly got rid of the Mitsubishi signs that hung down the side of that. But I heard it was fifty thousand a foot to move it, and he moved oh. it ten and he moved it ten feet up. So yeah, I bet he was pretty pissed. <laughs> oh my, oh my gosh. gosh, AJ, trouble yeah, That's well, like that's like that's like ordering off the value menu at McDonald's for the rest of us. For oh him, yeah, I feel like that's <laughs> jump change. It's like yeah, get it done tomorrow. Who cares? Yeah, but you know, and in, in, and I look back at it too. I wasn't by any means even close to the best punter in the league. And Mike Seifries in in uh, San Diego, they did a height study on him. He was averaging like 105 feet, averaging 105 feet of punt. So I think well, I think the pissed off part about Jerry at the before the game started was he was probably looking across on his sideline like what kind of what kind of punter do we have? <laughs> yeah, right. Like that's what I'm wondering is like why did yeah. they use Matt McBriar as the study? Like yeah. yeah, like I know he like he was the punter for the Cowboys for a long time, but yeah, he's a good like, punter. Don't get me wrong, I'm not talking shit about him. He's yeah, just, no, but I would I would like find like league averages and around yeah. the league, not just go off of like who we have on our special teams. If you're spending right. all of that money, at least do a little research. Like that's all we <laughs> just a little. Have, and then yeah, don't get mad at the guys study. for. And don't get mad at the guys for having the leg to do it. And I did see that Fisher, who you were right, was like the co-chairman of the rules committee. So he was high yeah. up on the rules committee. He was just on that thing. He was essentially oh, yeah. running the show. But he had your back after the game. I, oh, yeah. It th- uh, that preseason between you and Jeff Fisher, I, you you can't lie to me and tell me y'all weren't close. Oh, it was, it was so much fun. Um, again, just the, the amount of um... – I wouldn't call it necessarily respect, but just joy to like have me around and, and vice versa, be around him. It was, it was, man, it was such a good environment. Like I really enjoyed my time there. Um, I, 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 sir, I have zero animosity towards the team and the, and the decisions that they made bringing in Brett Kern. Yeah. What a, what a crap decision that was. Um, <laughs> The guy just retired two years ago yeah. and it's just like they, they they were like they traded up for him out of Denver and it was like on one hand you got Brett Kern family man already has a kid uh, you know good kid from Toledo played at Toledo and on the other hand an absolute lunatic who has no path in life <laughs> is just r- flying by the seat of his pants yeah I mean I hate to say it. They made a they made a really good, smart business choice. I just well, put it I, that way. I want to get to Kern in a second, but I gotta know, like, what was that conversation like? Because we got hard knocks cameras nowadays, and uh, you know everybody who gets cut on hard knocks, they they have a little ten second cameo where coach sits them down, is totally real with them, like, hey man, not gonna work out. Here's here's what you need to work on. Um, yeah. What what was that conversation like between you and Jeff Fisher? Because there isn't a punter that's had a better preseason than you did in '09. 
Yeah, no, the, what it boiled down to, though, was was Craig uh, yes. Hendrick. So Craig was healthy. He had changed his diet. He went on this like crazy kick. I, I did. Again, I didn't know him before, but apparently he was a big diet Coke and Reese's peanut butter cup guy. I um, see that. He cut sugar completely out. He was doing this vitamin C overload diet or like cleanse. He smelled like shit. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it was his it was insane. I've never been around somebody <laughs> with the most loud, aggressive farts of all oh, time. Craig. And, and, this, and Craig, this is the best intel we could possibly yeah, receive. On and, and Craig, and he probably, you know, we're, you know, 14 years removed from this, but he was trying everything he could possibly think of to get his body right. He had essentially given himself whiplash. Um, so he had numerous neck surgeries. He was playing without an ACL. He, oh he, he ruptured his ACL his senior year at Notre Dame and never got it fixed. And so his leg would hyperextend. I, oh, it was crazy. And so for, for him to deal with all those factors and, and make a career 17 years in the league uh, dealing with that, I mean, I got a tremendous amount of respect for him. And so when it came time to make roster cuts, you know, they, they were honest. They, they'd say, Hey, look, we really love you. You're going to have a bright future. And, uh, but it's, it's 53, you know, I mean, we got to cut this down. So they put me on waivers. I actually went to New York the next day mm -hmm. and battled against Steve Weatherford. And I kicked oh his God. ass so bad that Steve came up to me after the, and, and now mind you, Steve's six, two, six, three, all American decathlete. He's that he's working out without a shirt on, of course. And yeah. he just looks like a Greek God. And I'm a, you know, six foot pudgy, you know, two twenty. Uh, yeah. you know, standing next to each other i don't i don't pass the eye test a whole lot the statue I, of david envies the body of steve weatherford oh yeah sure. it, yeah <laughs> the, the guy loves fitness and <laughs> and i'm on the other end of things like probably went on a bender the night before and, and woke up and just <laughs> beat the shit out of him and to the point where he was like hey great job man enjoy new york and uh they ended up signing him just because of his experience and they you know they very rarely do they take a flyer on a rookie Super Bowl um, winner too. You know, this is, this yeah, I mean the tough. guy's got. Yeah, he's got. He's got the. He's got the stats. So, I got put on waivers again, and I was flying back to Columbus or Nashville, and I found out once I landed that I got claimed by Tampa. So I immediately had to get on another plane, come to Tampa. They their whole staff didn't even know they signed me. <laughs> like it, and so I get there, and they're like, "Who are you?" And I was like. I'm your new punter, I guess. And they were like, no, we got Dirk. And I was like, okay. <laughs> they didn't even let me work out. Like, honestly, no like way. the whole week. Yeah, I'm not kidding. They, they where where some, was the miscommunication there? Somebody in the front office clicked a button. That's my only explanation. And they had to pay me a game check to literally go out to St. Pete and drink Mai Tais while, because I would have had to buy my own <laughs> game ticket if I wanted to go. And I was like, how much is the game ticket? And they were like 200 bucks. I was like, yeah, I'll see you guys later. And so oh I knew gosh. I was once they started Dirk week one, he was under veteran protection. So they owed him all the money for the whole season and they don't owe me anything. So mm. I, I knew I was getting cut that Monday. And then unfortunately Craig blows out his calf. I think it was week two brought us back in and uh, had a big workout, which I thought I did really well. I thought I won the workout, but they, they signed Reggie Hodges for a hot minute who I love Reggie arguably the hardest guy to beat when there's no pressure on the line. He is almost impossible to beat in practice, but for whatever reason, you know, you, you get a game, he kind of, he doesn't have the same kind of flair and I'm the same guy all the time. And I ride real even keel. I don't get too high or too low. And oddly enough, they, they kept me on practice squad. I, I would venture to say very few punters are kept on practice squad. Yeah. Right. And, and so I was there for a few weeks and then, uh, I think we started 0 and 6 that year. Yeah, that's true. And, yeah. And and cleaned house and part of a deal with Denver brought in Brett Kern who uh there's a whole man there's a great story about how Brett got that Denver job and then ultimately uh <laughs> was out of there. It was, that story is insane, but um he came and and the rest is history and um couldn't be happier for Brett. I I mean he's he's one of the best guys in the league. Do you think they kept you on practice squad as like a reserve running back potentially, you know, in case things <laughs> fell, fell through? With like yeah, CJ? yeah. 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 Me and Chris, we, we would battle it out in practice, you know, <laughs> Len, 
goal line with Lindell. Yeah, it was right. I was right. I was right there, guys. I mean, yeah, yeah good, it, good back pocket option. It's like, oh, CJ, yeah, you may have more 80 plus yard touchdown runs than anyone in NFL history, but do you have any? 40 plus yard touchdown runs in the hall of fame yeah. game, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had one up on him and he knew that he was, he was <laughs> nervous. So <laughs> he, he worked hard in practice. They needed a, they, they needed a third partner to that smash and dash with, with Craig Hendrick smash dash and whiplash right. just doesn't sound yes. good. <laughs> so maybe yeah. bringing you in would have worked a little better. Well, I, I, I gotta, I gotta ask. Uh, what's what led Brett Kern? You said there's an insane story behind Brett Kern's exit in Denver. Is that your story to tell? I don't think it is. Um, okay. Let's just put it this way. Um, I went to Denver. I signed into Denver on a, on a futures contract the following year. So 2010, mm -hmm. I spent the whole summer out in Denver. And I was going against Britton Colquitt. And so Britton is incredibly talented in his own right. Obviously, his brother Dustin, um, playing for the Chiefs for all those years, I mean, just they're from a pedigree, right? I mean, it's just these guys know how to punt. And when we got out there, I had heard from one of the other teammates that Britain got cut for cause the year before. He had won the job over Brett. I believe it was Brett. And, uh, and then they cut him after the final cuts. But nobody really insinuated why, and I found out why. And it was a it was a problem that Britain was dealing with uh, at the time through college. I, I mean, you could read into it. He he did his own he had his own struggles, which he overcame and had a hell of a career. Uh, but it was interesting <laughs> because when I got cut, when jo Josh McDaniel was the coach, his rationale to me, even though I was leading statistically. Uh, was that he thought it would be pretty cool to have brothers playing against each other in the same division. Oh, come on. I'm no. not kidding. He's he like, cut, Josh McDaniels also the guy that traded Cutler, you know, before he took a snap in Denver. So or right. at least when, when McDaniel was so there. dumb. Oh, he, he, dumb. Cut Kenny, he cut Kenny Peterson, who he played high school football with. Oh. Yeah. It, it, so people people wonder why why does it take so long for Josh McDaniel to get a job? Well, I mean this is this is example A, an example yeah, B. Yeah, right, right. Really how it's worked yeah. out wherever he's gone. Yeah, you know, and again, I I didn't develop much of a relationship with him um just because I I really felt like the whole time I was there it was I was just there as a body. It, it didn't really feel like home. It, it, I never got comfortable there. Um Yeah, it was just it was kind of weird. And it that was really the time where i was like oh i get it now i understand why these guys call this a business you know yeah. like i was like all right this this makes sense um it, it just wasn't it, it didn't feel like tennessee and that's man i i like i said i come to nashville every year i i, I get invited to the alumni uh game every year and for yeah. i think i think it was for like the first six years i got these invites from the staff and I'm like, this is a mistake. Like they're not, <laughs> I, I'm not even an alumni. Uh, you know, I don't have an active, I, I, I was not active for a single game for the Titans, you know? And I, so I was like, I, I really don't think they mean to send this to me. And then Susanna, she called me or her, or Tina called me one time and, and they were like, Hey, we're going to stop sending these. If you don't come to one of these, I go, Oh, you meant to send those to me? <laughs> they were like, yeah, of course. <laughs> and so we went one year and it, it, I mean, you'd have thought I played for 10 years, the way I was treated. It was incredible. Uh, so we, we come back every year, not to mention we love the city. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, just, again, it just, my fondest memories of, of my cup of coffee in the NFL was, was definitely in Tennessee. So it's Where, safe to say you're a Titans fan to this day. Oh, yeah. You know, it's funny, and I, I was wanting to talk to you guys about this, too. I might actually be more connected to the team now than I ever have been. Really? How so? Why is that? So you got Mike Vrabel at the helm. Yeah. Who I, Ohio I State guy. Back, I came back and coached in 13, was recruited out of high school by Luke Fickle, and Luke Fickle's best friend is Vrabel. So I've spent some time around Coach Vrabel. Oh, nice. On the other side, though, Shane Bowen and I went to high school together and played football together. No oh my joke. Gosh. Yeah. Small so world. Our, our defensive coordinator and I are very good friends. 
Um, a lot of people don't know Shane's story. He was a hell of an athlete coming out of high school, went to Georgia Tech and broke his neck his like sophomore year, I want to say. Him and the other defensive end met at the quarterback and he just got the raw end of it and got into coaching. And he's been following Bravel around since 2012. And, uh, and, and Urban Meyer was actually one of the, the key components to Shane getting out. He, he took this job at Kennesaw State, which was a upstart football program in Georgia. And Urban called Shane. He goes, you're too, way too talented of a coach to be doing what you're doing. He goes, Bravel needs an assistant. You need to go to the Texans tomorrow. And he did. And the rest is history. Man, that between is that and between that and the stint he had at Jacksonville, Urban Meyer has done more to help the Titans in yeah. recent <laughs> years than I think any other coach in the business. It's amazing. Yeah. And you, man, you should hear the stories from uh, that 2012 uh, year at Ohio State uh, between Vrabes and, uh, and Urban. Oh man, we need they a whole not, podcast for that. Yeah, they're not they're not fans say. of one another, and uh, it came to a head in a, a very aggressive manner at one point. But uh, oh. it's neither here nor there. I can't imagine Mike Brable getting aggressive. That's yeah, weird. shocker, no. right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> guys out there doing pass block drills and no pads. <laughs> he's still he's the biggest guy on the team. Like still. It- it is it is insane and you know what the one thing is like like look like the titans obviously are on a seven game losing streak right now but i still feel confident in them in like every time they take the field mainly because he's at the helm and and i think that strictly stems from the fact that i know he can kick anyone else in the league's ass at any moment if he needed to (laughs) yeah if there was a bench clearing brawl i'll take us all day right (laughs) Like one yeah. of the best offseason topics are like, all right, who could win in a fight between the 32 NFL head coaches? Vrabel is always in the top five, sometimes the top yeah. three of that conversation every single time. There's very it, few, you know, very few coaches. It's Vrabel and whatever three defensive coordinators got a head job that yeah. first cycle. <laughs> like Salah, yeah, exactly. Campbell, you know, right. all those dudes. Camp- Campbell would be a tough out. Um, then you got, you know... What's the Jets quarterback or coach's uh, name? Sala, Robert, Robert Sala. Sala. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's he jacked. might be a tough out. Yeah, he's yeah. he's yeah. pretty well put together. That's yeah. the thing. It's like, yeah, you gotta look for strength. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh no, but me as a punter, I'm watching that. I'm getting way away from <laughs> all of that. You know? Who like of of like uh notable punters that you've played with, who do you think would be the best in a fight? McAfee, probably because he wouldn't feel a whole lot. Um <laughs> But uh, I, I mean, Steve Weatherford's probably up there. Um, Hendrick's there was country kid, strong. Hendrick in his prime. Whoo! I mean, when he was with the Packers back in the '90s, I bet he was he was uh, no joke. Um, mm-hmm. Who else? There was a kid who who punted for the Steelers for a hot minute. Who played for Baylor? Oh God, what was his name? He was nasty. His whole highlight film is not him punting. It's him running down on kickoff and destroying people. <laughs> Shit, what's his name? Yeah, I can't remember. It's I'm been trying too to long. remember, too. I, I don't think I can remember. Hell, our punter, he's a stud. Stonehouse. Okay, yeah. last, last Titans question from me to Wait, you. Uh, Daniel, Daniel uh, Sepulveda? Yeah, Sepulveda. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that kid was nasty. Nasty. <laughs> okay, punter, I guess, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, strong anyway. <laughs> well, that's all that matters. Um, they so Stonehouse, kind of similar to you a little bit in your in your uh, I guess in the start to their careers, although Stonehouse won the job over Kern. Um yeah. Kern was getting up there in age. Yeah, but um, even that, Jeff, like there were there were people that were like, you know, I, we you're were, really we gonna really you're upset. gonna cut ties with Kern now, yeah, then and move on to this rookie. And, and maybe that yeah. doesn't happen with Fisher up there, like you said, since he you know has a different kind of view with those older players. But what what's your yeah. what's your impression on Stonehouse so far? I uh, dude, the, the guy's killer. Um, you know, Nissan Stadium is, and I every year that I've been, you know, we we have the punters have this and kickers have a, a stupid habit of looking at the flags at the top of the stadium and seeing how the wind swirls in a stadium, uh, you know, having played at Ohio state, it's, it's a weird wind in there because of how mm-hmm. tall it is. Um, it's t- Tennessee's not the easiest. It's not the hardest place to punt by any means. Buffalo in the winter is probably the worst, but 
um, it's tough in there. And, and the way that he's been able to step up and change field position, is, it's been very, very good. Um, I was sad to see Brett go just because I, I love the guy and, and uh, had a hell of a career uh, with Tennessee. But uh, it's to no fault of Rabel and the, and the special teams coaches. It, it, I'm, it's a business, though, you know, and yeah. you see a kid with that kind of talent who you're going to pick up for a, a quarter of the price that you're paying Brett and, and, and maybe they need the space. Who knows? You know, there's, there's so, there's a multitude of reasons why they make the roster decisions the way that they do, but I really like him. I, I think he's doing a hell of a job. Um, and in, if he stays healthy, that kid can play a long time. All right. Yeah. Now, where are you located currently? Where do you live? So I, I live in Tampa, Florida. Okay. Um, oh, you're back. With the my ties, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look, yeah. Look, look, you have you you have a brief layover in Tampa, and it'll suck you in. It will. Yeah. I, I'm with it, AB it was, on this it, one. It was funny. I I took a job down here in 2012. Um, so long story short, um, worked out for the Falcons the day before the lockout in '11. Um, they ended up not, or they signed some kid and immediately cut him and that's a whole other story, but I just, I was like, all right, I, I think I'm done. You know, I, they don't pay you to keep trying. And uh, I have some regrets about that, I guess, but I also don't know that I was mature enough to handle it at the time too, which the older you get, I guess you get a little bit more humbled about things and the way you were living. And uh, I was pretty, I was pretty wild back then. And, um, but anyways, took a job down here in, in 12, um, met the woman that I ended up marrying down here. And then my cool. company that I'm with now um, opened an office down here and asked me to come down. And I, initially I was like, I'm all right. It was back in Columbus and it's easy to get sucked in, in that, in that, in Columbus, Ohio, if you grew up there, played there, you know, it's a, it's a connection heaven, but you know, we wanted warmer climate and not to get into a whole political discussion. We couldn't wait to leave Ohio with all the COVID crap that was going on so mm -hmm. um no it's good we we've enjoyed it down here and and you know i i, I like sun and yeah and being, yeah no we're about, good. we're about 30 minutes from the beach and it, so it's it's a good setup but it's, it's a little warm right now yeah well, no i'm in chicago you, right now and i envy that trust me every yeah. uh let's say october to april i envy yeah. where you're at right now so oh, I'll, I'll be golfing that whole time so <laughs> yeah yeah right right, right. i'll be yeah, dude, golf, like, i'll be bundling up the, just to take my dog out <laughs> yeah the, the golf courses are actually in prime prime shape during those those months and so that's, so that's I will, why you move down i guess that's that's another my my final question for you uh the with being a punter, I feel like being punters and kickers, always just tremendous golfers. I don't know if it's with the leg swing or or what, but Craig Hendrick, obviously famously a oh, very a scratch good golfer. golfer. Yeah. 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 Plus three at Vanderbilt Legends. He was how's your good. how's your golf game? And Legends is no joke, man. Legends no, is a tough course. Oh, they took me. It was him. It was Craig, Kerry Collins, um, Kerry, another Pat, big, big golfer, Kerry big Collins. guy, yeah, Patrick Ramsey. And then they, they brought me along. I think it was a charity case, like a make a wish day for, for me. <laughs> and, uh, I, I got my ass kicked all day and, and it was a real quick story. You guys will love this. I I'm after the round the next day, we're sitting in the locker room and Ramsey's just riding me. He's like, dude, you got this Tommy armor set of clubs that my son has. He's like, you got to, <laughs> he's like, you got to upgrade buddy. And so he's trying to sell me these Titleist, you know, blades that he got, you know, probably discounted. And he's like, oh, yeah, 500 bucks. They're all yours. And I didn't have any money. And so Carrie butts in and he's like, Hey man, what are you looking for? I was like, nothing in particular. I just would be nice to have a decent set of clubs. He goes, come to my house tonight and uh, we'll see if we'll work something out. And Patrick's pissed. He's like, Carrie, why are you getting in the way of my deal and all this stuff? And, <laughs> and I, in my head, I'm like, if nothing else, I'm going to Carrie Collins' house. I got yeah, yeah, right. a sweet deal. So, yeah. Yeah. So I show up at his house and he had, uh, he had a, he had two car garage and then a separate two car garage. And he popped the, the separate one open and it was nothing but golf stuff. I mean, golf clubs from wall to wall. He had the brand new V red bag. He had a brand new Titleist bag. And uh, he hands me a bundle of, of, Hogan apex edges. I still have them. 
And uh, he's like, well, I'm like six, five. So these are probably a little long for you. And I'm like, dude, I'll figure it out. And uh, um, he goes, here you go, man. Give me a couple, you know, dozen balls and whatever. And I go, all right, buddy. I was like, I go, let me give you something for these. And he's like, no, 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 no. He's like, you're good. Don't worry about it. These are good clubs. Just enjoy them. And we talked for maybe a couple minutes. And then I'm, again, I try to be, try to be nice. I was just like, Kerry, come on, man. Big 10 guy to big 10 guy. Let me give you something for these. And he goes, rookie, don't take this the wrong way, but there ain't shit that you got that I want. Enjoy the clubs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I was Harry, like, yes, what sir. A savage. Yeah. No, oh, that was Harry. great. <laughs> yeah, he burned me. But at the same time, I was like, hey, he's probably not wrong. Yeah. Gary, so, he, he gets a free burn for, for a set of golf clubs. Yeah. Oh, man. I'll trade. take that all day. Yeah. And so, better no, than $500. Yeah, I would yeah. gladly get oh, roasted yeah. by Kerry Collins to get a free set of oh, clubs yeah. out of it. <laughs> but the game's gotten a lot better. I've got three kids now that's six, four, and two, so I don't get out as much as I'd like. But uh, but I, I play as much as I can, and it's coming around. I'm a I'm a single digit, so okay. Are that. you are you making it back to the alumni game this year? Yes, I believe we're playing Atlanta in the Houston Oiler Throwbacks. Yes, yeah. yeah. So that's technically the only jersey I've worn, kind of. <laughs> or at least the most famous one. That's right. That's, That's a good right, point. Because it was the, the AFL. It was the AFL yeah. unis that game. Yeah. Yeah. So we had the we had the Oiler unis on, which I I, they, I was like, can I have the game jersey? And they were like, you can buy it. And I was like, shit. All right, I got to buy a couple of these. So yeah. I bought a couple. But yeah, That's no, I'll, we'll be back, and uh, we can't wait. We we mark it on the calendar every year. Do you awesome. still have the Hall of Fame game game worn jersey that you scored in? Was that don't... one of the ones you bought? I, I don't have the jersey. I've got the helmet and I've got the ball. Okay. Um, and I got to give Canton credit to Baronis. Yeah, I got I got to give Baronis credit. He ran on the field. Somehow he got that ball because it was a K ball, right? I mean, it was a kicker ball. Yeah. And I want to say that was the same. They kept that ball in play. He hit his extra point and he intentionally, cause it's like a high school field. He intentionally hit it kind of low. To, so it went into the net and then I'm pretty sure he did or, or our ball guy went and grabbed that, put a sticker on it and like set it aside. So I what a hero. That. What a hero. It that's wouldn't even have occurred to me to do that. So no, those guys were, again, that's the type of feel I, I was, um, I was around in Tennessee and, couldn't be more thankful for that time. Well, AJ, uh, you are you you uh, Brett Kern and, and have have been two of our our white whales uh, for this podcast, and that's not a joke when we say that. Like we legitimately like we've ever since we do a segment called Remember the Titan, and I believe it was Jack who did you one week as our, our Remember the Titan, where we just go back and we think of like it's literally just name that guy, but for Titans of it's the nice. past. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And he, he did you one time and I was like, man, we, what a, what a great guy. Never in my wildest dreams did I think we would ever be able to get you on this podcast, but we did. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day to, to join us and just yeah. know that the, the lore of AJ Trapasso, uh, <laughs> Albert, Albert Joseph Trapasso is yeah. going to live on forever on this podcast. And we will never let Titans fans forget about the two most iconic plays in Titans history that will never count. Well, I appreciate that guys. It's it's, those are great words to hear. I, I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah. Um, anything I can do for the the Titans community and, and, and you guys, and just hit me up. I'm, I might All not right. be in Nashville, but I'm around. Titans fans. If you Twitter? Oh yeah. Uh you mean X? Uh, X. Yeah, no, <laughs> um yeah, I'm not real active on there. I, I okay. shut that down a, a while ago, but yeah, I mean I'm not a big social media guy. I try okay. and stay sort of private. The mostly what you're gonna see out of me is like pictures of the, the pork butt that I smoked in the smoker. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Big cooking guy, but yeah, I mean uh, I don't know. I, 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 I enjoy social ask. media. Yeah, you, you never know what the former players. So I, yeah, I right, that. right. Well, you, yeah. at very least, we have a you know obviously this is uh, we have a thousands of Titans fans that listen to the pod. It, yeah. When you go to the Atlanta Falcons game, guys, keep an eye out for AJ and just shout out, shout out something to him. We got it. We got to give him <laughs> something to shout out at AJ to get his attention. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
Hey, Hi, where'd your hair go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that'll that'll be the, that, if, you, if you want that, yeah. then, then we'll have them do that. I, I'm, I'll be walking. I'll be near Donnie Nikki, so it'll be two bald guys just walking around, you know, trying yeah. to sneak into uh, Don- in the sweets. <laughs> Donnie Nikki's come on here before. Donnie so Nikki, that's... another another guy who has been on this podcast. Yeah, AJ. Once yeah. you come on the podcast, you immediately become an uncle of the podcast. So from here on yeah. out, you will be. Uncle oh, AJ Trapasso. So we appreciate you, man. Seriously. Hey, I appreciate you guys, man. And I, uh, um, yeah, just, again, just appreciative that, you know, you guys had me on and, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy to think it was that long ago, but uh, anytime to sit and reflect on those good stories is always fun.